Hey guys! Today we're making a sweatshirt or a hoodie as well as a pair of shoes inspired by Totoro. Hope you'll enjoy! So first for the sweatshirt you're going to need a pattern and I just put the doll on top of the paper while sketching. But if you're not good at eyeballing I would recommend using a measuring tape just to get some more accurate measurements so that the shirt will fit the way you want it to. Especially for the hood, you want to make sure that you make it long enough to go from the neckline of the shirt to the top of the head and then allow for some extra fabric to go over the head. And for the hip or waistband as well as the cuff, you just want to make them as wide as the pattern for the shirt and sleeve. Obviously, you can make this sweatshirt into whichever character you want. It would be super cute to make it into Pikachu, but if you're going to be making Totoro, you'll need some grey and white stretchy fabric. The first part of the pattern I chose to focus on was the one for the body itself and you're going to need a front and back. I chose to fold the fabric simply to avoid having to sew at the shoulders. Cut that out and then for the front of the shirt you want to cut off an extra piece which is going to be the white belly. And you can then use this piece to measure for the white fabric. And with all the pieces you sketch and cut out, make sure to leave enough room for a seam allowance because otherwise the shirt won't fit the doll. Place the two pieces good side to good side and sew them together. I'm not going to show you how to sew in this video because I just used a regular up and down or in and out stitch. Next you want to cut out the two pieces for the sleeves and sew these onto the rest of the shirt. Cut out the waistband as well as the cuff, you're going to need two of each and sew them onto the shirt. I first attach one side of the cuff and waistband by sewing in one direction. I then folded it and went back in the opposite direction. Fold the shirt so you have a front and back and sew along the sleeves and sides. Cut out the two pieces for the hood, fold and sew along the edge to make it look neat and then sew the two pieces together. And you can then sew it onto the neckline of the shirt. For this one I still went with the up and down or in and out stitch, but I went in a slight zigzag to allow the fabric to stretch. Mark off and cut two holes on the top of the hood. Then make some simple ears, fill them with batting or pillow fluff and sew them onto the hood. I added some elastic to the cuffs and the sleeves and then finally I just added some details using acrylic paint mixed with fabric medium. To make the shoes or sneakers, you're first going to trace the foot of the doll onto a piece of paper. Using those measurements as well as measurements from the doll foot itself, you can then make the rest of the pattern. Basically what you'll need is a sole for the foot, then a side piece which you're going to need two of, a strip which is going to go in the back, the tongue of the shoe, and then a part for the toe if you're not going to be making this from clay. You can then trace the side of the shoe onto a piece of fabric. I chose to use white and then painted the details, but you can use any fabric you want. And again, I just used acrylic paint mixed with fabric medium, and I also went back over the design on the sweatshirt with the lighter grey. I also chose to paint on the stitching because using thread for this is going to look way too thick. Glue this onto another sheet of fabric to make for Nita looking back and then cut that out leaving some fabric at the bottom. 
To make the bottom of the shoe, roll out a white sheet of clay, cut out the shape of the sole and then use your blade to add some texture. Pre-bake, make the part for the toes and bake again. After baking, glue on the sides of the shoe. Cut and glue on the strip on the back. Glue the tongue onto the part where the toes are. Use a needle tool to poke some holes for the laces. And I then laced up the shoes using embroidery thread. Lastly, I just cut some strips of paper to go around the bottom edge. Use acrylic paint to paint some lines. Then seal with glaze and you're done.